members, we actually have two speakers that are going to do a chat together. Uh, I think this went really well yesterday, so I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to talk to Jan Steenkamp, who's the Senior Department Manager of Business Intelligence Project at TFG. And let me tell you a little bit about Jan. He's, he's currently managing the Business Intelligence Project team and has responsibility for the development of the entire um, enterprise data warehouse and the BI platform. He has over 20 years of experience in retail and consumer goods reporting and analytics. We're also going to hear from Pete Vamaso from Pyramid Analytics. He is the global marketing head of Pyramid Analytics, and he basically is focused on building a world-class marketing function to promote the best platform on the market. Today, we're going to talk about a special topic. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here as I as I tell you this because. I want to make sure that you're you're aware of what what a big deal this truly is. Um, let's see. There we go. All right. So we are going to talk about 2,300 plus outlets, 30 plus brands, and over 20 data sources coming together on one analytics platform. So I want everybody to understand kind of the complexity of all that's involved as I as I bring up our speakers up on stage. Also, Pyramid Analytics has been kind enough to offer a giveaway for the session. So as you're watching the session, all you have to do to participate in this giveaway is type in hashtag pyramid and the giveaway itself is actually AirPods. So whoever loves AirPods, go ahead and start typing in hashtag pyramid for a chance to win a raffle. We'll announce winners at the end of the session. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Yan and Pete, hello and welcome. Uh, hey, Kate. Hey, how's it going? Great. Look, how are you? you? Thanks for hanging out backstage for, for a bit. <laughs> Kate, the question that I'm getting most frequently um, is, how do you make that dedicated pillow float? Oh, you know what? I might reveal this at the end of the conference. My <laughs> kids have been asking. They come in here, they're like trying to pull it down because they know they're used to seeing it somewhere else. But yes, this uh, this will be revealed in the post conference uh, blog article that I, I send out tomorrow. Stay tuned. Can't wait. All right, I'm gonna hop off and let you guys uh, chat for 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll go ahead take questions, and we'll announce the winners, two winners of AirPods at the end of your session. <clears throat> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Kate. And uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I just want to say, you know, thanks for all you do for the community. Um, this is our third time sponsoring Dedicated, and we just we believe in what you're doing. Um, it's it's so thrilling to be involved in in uh, yet another Dedicated. So congratulations! Uh, thanks for the amazing content. Yesterday was was a blast. Um, so I have been looking forward to this session for quite a while. Uh, when we started talking about the data, Dedicated industry and you know what we could bring to retail um, i started thinking immediately about tfg and the work the amazing work that jan and his team have have done there and so rather than you know um rather than doing a, a vendor session which nobody wants to see um and you know or or do a, a bunch of slideware um i thought that we would just have a conversation about jan's story and bring it to the the community of of retail professionals uh, here and data professionals more broadly. Um, but but Jan has such an a, an interesting story to tell. Um, we've been on the journey with Jan now for three years, I think, um, sure. and it's it's been a, a fun journey. Um, Jan's got a bunch of of uh, interesting challenges, and so Jan. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, this is a, a thrill for me, and and hopefully, um, or, or undoubtedly, I know that the audience is gonna gonna have a lot to take away from this. So, um, just for the for in order to set the stage, um, could you give just kind of a high level? I mean, I know Kate kind of spoiled um, some of the <laughs> scope and scale in her introduction, um, but. But for those who are unfamiliar with TFG, uh, you know, TFG is a, a major global brand um, or a major global retailer. Uh, can you give us a sense of number of brands, number of outlets, number of countries, just kind of give us a sense of the sure. scale? Sure, I can do that. So 
So we have got 29 brands in Africa. Uh, we've also got brands in the UK um, and also in Australia. Um, so we have got, um, we're headquartered in South Africa, in Cape Town, South Africa. And, and we've got 3,200 stores in Africa. Um, so across 10 to 12 countries in Africa, we've got stores which um, sell our goods. Um, yeah, and um, we've got um, four distribution centers in South Africa as well. We've also got, um, uh, we've had, until recently, we've had um, two manufacturing plants. We've just um, opened and acquired some more. So we've got now four manufacturing plants. So we um, do a lot of our apparel we do in South Africa. We actually manufacture in South Africa uh, and we do a lot of quick response. Um, so yeah, that is that is TFG. Um, Wow. So there's there's a lot of breadth and, you know, there's vertical integration and there's all kinds of stuff. I know that, you know, from our work together, I know you're bringing together at least uh, 20 different data sources. You're doing all kinds of uh, interesting things with multi multi model, multi source dashboards um, and uh, and reporting. Um, so when you were let's talk a little bit about what the what was the um, what was the need? Uh, obviously, you had a bunch of, of different tools. You have some siloed data. Um, what was the need for platform within TFG, and and how did you go about uh, about selecting a platform? Yeah, I think I think the the thing is there's two things. You have to look at what you've currently got and what kind of uh, analytics and reporting you you um, giving out there to your to your users, but also to the future to see. Um, you know, where are you going? Because um, we've got a lot of um, data sources and we've got a lot of on-prem data sources, but um, the cloud is 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 becoming more prevalent. Uh, a lot of our um, uh, solutions and things that we're doing is now cloud-based. So you, you basically have to now span your um, large footprint on-prem to, um, you know, uh, to the cloud as well and having a, a hybrid footprint. So a lot of, let, let me talk about what we've got or what we had. A lot of it was performance-based. We had to look, um, we've had a lot of analysis services, um, Microsoft Analysis Services Cubes. Um, and we we were looking for better performance on them because uh, one of our um, our merchandise analytics cube is a terabyte big, um, and and we needed to because it spans the whole twenty nine brands, um, and you can get your um, sales, um, stock margin, stock age, uh, everything in that cube, and um, we needed to see is there something that can give us better performance. Um, and from that point of view, um, we then actually looked at that. But it is also a case of a lot of um, our um, uh, brand data was sitting in disparate sources. A lot of um, right. you know the best, the the, the best, and the, the most celebrated um, BI tool out there, Excel. Um, you know, everybody's using it, <laughs> and um, and they were pulling data out of my out of my tools with uh, into Excel and doing um, pivots on it. So it's a case of you needed to see how do you bring these together and how do you actually bring them together in dashboards. Um, and I think one of the stories of one of my the, the one of the users that, that that started the journey with us into 2018. Um, he had um, uh, started on a Monday morning and he had, uh, I think it was five or six um, different areas we had to pull data from. Uh, a lot of it was in Excel and then he had to go and do VLOOKUPs and things like that. It took him three and a half hours every Monday morning to put this report together. He went into the office at 7.30, uh, 10 quarter to 11 before his management meeting, he stopped and uh, you know, he couldn't analyze his data. We actually brought that together wow. and it actually ran for 10 minutes um, bringing those those sources together, the data, um, Excel as well, and and in the end, um, you know, you could analyze and give his business a. And, and I think one of the biggest things what was good about it is uh, with the platform, is that they could actually sit in the management meeting and actually um, do data discovery in the in the uh, in the platform. So they could actually they had a presentation, and in that presentation, they actually used uh, you could um, drill to their data to locations or to. Uh, the suppliers or whatever, and that that made a huge difference for them as a business. So, so those were, and then, but then we also have to, and and, and I think consolidating that uh, reporting and dashboarding 
but now it, our next one of our and we talk later about next steps but one of the next steps is how do you modernize your 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 information platform and how do you get the new um, technologies to bring in data together with all this um, data you've already got yeah I know you're you're bringing in things like um, foot traffic data um, yes. you're bringing in some of your uh, ERP data your HR data um, your point of sale data um, all of that is being brought together um, although it's not being it's not being ingested, right? Uh, oh, and e-commerce. So you're you're bridging the e gap between rather. your brick and mortar yeah. and your your e-commerce. Um, but I know data persistence is an issue, um, especially on your SAP stack. Um, yes. So the fact that you can bring together in a single view without bringing all the data together in a single data store, I think, was a yeah. a benefit. Definitely. Yeah, and I think one of the big things is um, we've got what we call a digital boardroom. Um, uh, yep. And we actually, the, the idea is to actually give one, all of our, um, our directors a view of their functional area for what they're responsible for, but that your data actually is available straight through. In otherwise, uh, the, the same report and the same dashboard and it gets seen by the whole organization. Um, so it's not a case of that, that you put something together for the board in a pack or something uh, because you've had to pull it together in Excel, you you can drill and they can they see the high level dashboards, but the planners and buyers, for example, will see the same data for their department or, or commodity or whatever it is. And and I, I think the huge thing for us was bringing together our financial and our other data, like bringing together financial, merchandise, uh, logistics, manufacturing, bringing that together in one platform and actually being able to do this digital boardroom um is really a, a huge plus for us and that's one of the reasons why we're also um, doing this in terms of uh in terms of user adoption and, and acceptance um did you have any resistance when you were moving to a platform approach you mentioned excel and and kind of the the um the the persistence or stubborn persistence <laughs> of the excel throughout the organization oh. Um, what has the user adoption journey been like in uh, in terms of the the uh, use of the pyramid platform? Look, it's 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 all about the the um, being um, connected to your users and actually making sure that you actually bring it to them. Because um, yes, uh, we do get um, you know they want to they used to the the way they do things and they want to do it that way, but. But you know, for example, in our manufacturing area, we we had um, uh, Excel spreadsheets in our um, cut room, and 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 we actually took that five different spreadsheets of the supervisors, we put it on um, on a SharePoint list, and that SharePoint list gets pulled into uh, into our um, data solution, and 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 they can actually start to see that together with 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 other things. So it's it's a case of what we're doing is we're actually sometimes you don't. Con try and convince them. You actually help them with their pro with their with their, uh, the problem they're trying to solve, and and that way, if if I start to somebody the other day said to me, no, they they want a management studio um, on their PC because they want to query the back end, and I said, yeah. um, unfortunately, we we don't do that for users, um, but I can give you a pyramid, and um, after two days, she's as happy as can be. She's um, so now she's really killing it and bringing this uh, data together and, and, and working with it. And that was based, uh, that was through an acquisition, correct? I know that TFT correct. has grown yeah. uh, grown aggressively through acquisition. Yes. And, that's, and that's an interesting topic. I mean, every time you acquire a new company, obviously you acquire a new data stack, a new tool stack, right. um, and, and you have to bring that all together um, in, in terms of, you know, trying to solve silos. So. Um, how has the how has the platform approach, um, you know, kind of aided in the onboarding of uh, of acquired companies? Yeah, I think I think one of the things that that uh, helps is is speed to market, is to actually sure. deliver to them much faster. Um, we uh, so we had, for example, for this new company, we had to do a, a order management um, uh, report. Um, and and it was actually a case of that um, we had it in the in our old tools, 
but we had to now bring it over. We had the view already in, in our um, EDW and we actually just put it, pulled it in. And you can now bring it together with any of the supply data. They bring in their replenishment indicators and bringing that together. So, so having the platform and being able to bring things together is, is really, really uh, making a huge difference for us. Being, for example, one of the things being able to run our sales um, uh, near real time in BW for HANA uh, on permit is is really for us made a made a huge difference and um, yeah it, it's it's working well for us and it's actually taken us a long way. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I love that you just went live with uh, SAP. That was a month ago or so that that you pushed SAP yeah. in production. Yeah. Yes. So, Jan, I know you've been in. Um, I know you've been in retail for two decades, maybe. And yep. uh, this last year with COVID was um, probably unlike yep. any other that you've seen. And, and particularly, I know that this is no surprise. Uh, retailers were particularly hard hit by COVID. Um, yep. I'm curious how the how bridging the gap between your brick and mortar and your e-commerce into a, a single view. Um, helped navigate uh, some of the challenges you had with COVID? Yeah, I th for us, it was a case of when our stores were closed for about 35 days, where they uh, couldn't trade at all at one stage in March, la uh, April last year. Um, yeah. And um, and 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 we we could actually now start to, uh, but then when, when the bricks and mortars opened, um, the whole like what we do to, uh, is to say, okay, what percentage of our, we could show how our e-commerce um, um, percentage of sales has grown over that time, but also how is it now going over the, the last 12 months after we've you know, opened our stores um, again, uh, but also to start showing, you know, what we've got available in our stores and what available, uh, you know, online, uh, bringing all of that data together, the, the options and, and for our, um, you know, executives to actually make decisions, uh, on, uh, you know, on, on top of that, um, you know, bringing together, for example, your average basket size um, and those things um, from both platforms, from your stores and from your online. Um, uh, there's been um, some decisions that, that's been made, um, you know, from that data um, in the last two months. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's really helped us a lot of um, just, you um, getting the data out there and, and to getting a, a better visibility um, to a broader um, uh, community um, of our environment. Uh, but, but to bring a, a, a picture that is spanning, not, you know, the specific areas, and but um, a, a span of areas actually has made a huge difference for us. So we've we've made great progress in our our three year journey together so far. I'm curious what's next. Um, I know that we've talked about uh, external data sharing and kind of bridging the gap yes. between retail and manufacturing. I know you've you're vertically integrated somewhat, um, but but what's next for TFG? So 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 for us now, it's a case for for uh, we need to um, you know. Uh, give data to our suppliers for example in a much more currently you know you have to uh, share that data with ftp or with emails and things like that and and you have mm -hmm. to actually now say all right how do you do it differently so it's actually um uh, bringing um giving them access to a a portal where these um you know they see their slice of data but you can also see you know um what their what their portion is and how they compare to others. Of, of course, they can't see where the others are, but you can give them, you know, ratios and, and things like that. Uh, but but also um, for us is to um, our manufacturing um, arm has got about thirty CMTs um, and and to either start to bring those data in as well and actually start to um, expose data to them as well and and to um, help. Uh, you know that community of our manufacturing arm um, to to also you know manage um, uh, their um, their data and the business much better. And, and that's all things that you can accomplish with the Pyramid platform. Yes, we we are doing that already. Um, we have actually um, you know done that, and 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 the next step is now to. Um, to actually just um, start to um, bring in um, or, or create the, port the portal is not um, is, is our next step, 
uh, but we are already able because with permit you can actually um, you know your um, your governance from a security point of view um, you can use either your um, security settings that you've got in your uh, your source system but permit has got a very good um, security um, uh, layer that you can actually say all right these are the suppliers these are the, the the users that can see them and you and then they will only see their data um and and and, and that's what we're going to actually utilize to um, actually do that so but 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 for me the, the the good thing about it is that you know that consistency of that security platform that we can do across our data sources that we bring in now is one of the things that actually is important for us also to to start to bring in consistency on the views that or the the the, the tools that the, the that people use uh you know not using different um things um you know people are very used to or they they some people are extremely good with the calculations in um in excel um but and you can use those those same calculations that you can do in in, in excel you know you can do in pyramid as well in the in the um, in the uh, modeling tool, so yeah, that that for us is helping us a lot. Hello, oh, Kate's okay, back. It must mean we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I know we're out of time, but I wanted to make sure that we have some time to address questions, do the giveaway, and I have a few announcements. So I, sure. I've been really enjoying the session, Jan and, and Pete. Thank you so much for for sharing that story. I think You're it's welcome. so powerful. And, and the audience is, is really, you know, the, the questions and comments are, are blowing up. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to awesome. share my screen so people can, um, so they can see the, the giveaway, right? So we can, we can do that. Oh, okay. And while I do that, let's take a question here from Scott. Um, I'll read out the question. Uh, Jan, this one's for you. Uh, what type of data standardization approach did you use? To um, to bring all your de disparate data together, not the actual platform, but the data structure yes. itself, to integrate at brand, product, banner, supplier, uh, et cetera, dimensions. So, so currently we do that in our uh, in our EDW with our um, with our dimensions and things. But but it's a it's a very good question in the sense that. Um, we, we do have our challenges about with it because you know your data governance and making sure that the one area what they call turnover and the other one called sales is actually the same in the same definition um, so we are um, you, you we are using some data lineage tools to actually start to see that as well uh, but we have kicked off a program now to actually and our finance guys is driving a lot of that to say all right you know this is the definition of turnover this is the definition of, of of whatever we've we, we've had that but you know having seven trading now eight trading division uh, divisions uh, and 28 brands um, you know people have their own ideas and they they, they sometimes you know, uh, bring them to forth uh, so yeah it is it is something that you have to that, that we work on it's something we constantly have to work uh, work to work on that but we do we do have got our, our product um, is from our, our ERP system and then um, you know our SAP system handles our um, locations and branches and things like that but yeah we bring it all together Great, thank you. I hope thank that, so that answered the question. I, I think it did. Thank you so much, Ann. I'm going to do uh, one of the giveaways, then we'll take another question and give other folks a chance to uh, put the hashtag pyramid in the chat. So let's go ahead and announce the winner of the very first uh, pair of AirPods. Let's go. I need to get like a drum roll sound effect here. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is Doug O'Hara. Congratulations. Doug O'Hara. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations. I'm gonna, uh, we're you need gonna a laugh track, you. Kate. Huh? <laughs> you need a laugh track, like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was really funny. The the clapping and the laughing, that was really good. I, I can't yeah. compete with Jeffrey's uh, tech skills here. So I um, yeah. question for you, Jan, again, it's a question for you. Um, Elise is asking, not sure if I missed this, uh, but what role does location intelligence play in your data strategy? I know, Pete, you mentioned something around foot traffic and kind of how that data gets gets pulled in as well. So maybe talk a bit about that. Yeah. So so what we do is we've got um, uh, uh, devices in each one of our stores on every door, and and we count the hit the heads. Um, we call it foot count, but actually we count the heads. Um, and 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 we actually then use that to say um, what um, how, what percentage of the the the. Uh, 
um, foot count that we've got actually has converted into sales. Um, so we use so we use that um, uh, to actually determine you know where we are doing well at converting um, into sales the the feed that comes into the store. Uh, um, we are we are also planning to um, you know do a lot more of those type of things um, uh, to bring our e-commerce even our e-commerce where we you know the eyes on screen um, you actually you actually have to um, then say what are you getting there and and it, what is the relation between those um, those customers on you know your your conversion online and, and and in bricks and mortar so so yes that's what we're doing at the moment with that it's a it plays a very large portion it's something we have to you know do more of we also to see in which areas what sell best but yeah that that is something that we that we work on a lot as well awesome thank, thank you for sharing that all right i'm going to share my screen once again so before i click the draw button we have 88 entries all right let's see if we can get uh, if we can break 90 or even 100 before I click the, the next draw button. Uh, in the meantime, I want to let you guys know that we do have two other LinkedIn Live sessions coming up with Pyramid, and we're actually going to take a deeper dive into two topics. On June 1st, we're going to talk about data storytelling, and on June 16th, they'll be back again to talk about aligning data strategy and analytics culture to make data-driven transformation a reality. I will try sharing the links in the chat. I know it's flowing pretty fast, but if you make sure to go ahead and sign up for the conference, I am sending those links out as a uh, part of the a thank you for registering email. All right, we have 93 entries. Pete. Come on, 100. <laughs> <laughs> we'll one more question. I really want to do Oh, so it's hard to, to find a question since everyone's typing in hashtag pyramid. Um, <laughs> We did have a question. I probably won't find the actual one, but it was around the digital infrastructure in South Africa. So, Jan, if you want to talk about that while we, uh, for a minute. Yeah, that, it, 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 ha it has improved a lot over the last um, 10 years, I would say, but in the last two years, it's, it's accelerated a lot. Uh, with um, you know the rollout of fiber, and um, you know we starting to roll out 5G at the moment, um, but uh, and and there's a lot more to come on, right? but it it has um, uh, it is pretty well and or pretty good, um, but you know uh, cell phones is um, or mobiles is a is a is something which most of people in South Africa <laughs> has got, um, so that is um, you know. Uh, Having digital um, uh, infrastructure, good. It's it's pretty good in South Africa at the moment. Um, it, okay. uh, it's and it's growing. Okay, great. Thank you for that. All right, we are at 117. I'm going to go ahead and yes, we broke it. 119 actually it just went up as I kept talking. <laughs> All right, 121. Lucky lucky winner number two is. We also need that music. Uh, all right, so. Hank Murray. Congratulations. All right, Hank. Oh, well done. I love that I don't have to select winners and it's like so much more <laughs> fair this way, right? So awesome. Love it. All right. Well, gentlemen, I think this brings us to the end of the presentation. I'll thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you both so much for, for, the, you, for the session and thank you for taking questions and Pyramid, thank you for, for the fun giveaway. I think the audience always loves to, to get, get free stuff. Um, and I know at the live events in the next few weeks, we, we might have some fun swags and, uh, and giveaways as well. There may be some, yeah, there may be some fun things coming up at the live events. So we would love to see you on the 1st and the 16th. Uh, please do register, please do come. Great topics. Um, so we'd love to see you there. And Jan, thank you so much for your time. Thank awesome. you so much for sharing your story. Super interesting, and and I know that the audience found it uh, interesting as well. So, thanks again for your time. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks, Kate.